All right, alrighty. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the best option strategy for generating a consistent income. And I know a lot of you are going to be interested in this because I've got a lot of people reaching out to me to ask me, you know, Davis, what is the best option strategy that they can use to generate a consistent income? All right. So in my opinion, the best strategy that can help you with a consistent income is none other than the short strangle. So what is the short strangle, right? So the short strangle is a neutral option strategy with the combination of a short put and a short call, all right? So if you already been used to selling short put options, well, then the short strangle is basically just selling an additional call option on top of that, right? Because when you do it this way, basically you are also helping with the downside risk. For example, if you sell a put option and the market happens to tank, right? It goes past your short put. Now, if you only had the short put option, then your losses can be, you know, pretty big. But if you were to just sell an additional call on top of your put option, now this becomes a strangle. Now, what happens is that now your loss to the downside is slightly mitigated right because you receive a credit for this and as you know the market cannot be at both sides at one time right it can only be at one side so when you add a short call on top of the short put what you have done now is that you have added more credit to this strategy at the same time you know you also are reducing the loss in case if the market goes past your short put option now this is what you call an undefined risk option so with an undefined risk option Theoretically, the loss is unlimited, but practically, that is not really going to happen. All right, so and I'm going to explain a little bit more later on. So, if you're a little bit more bullish, you can actually adjust the strikes up, right? You can shift the whole strangle upwards. So, if you think that the market is going to go a little bit higher, then you can adjust it this way. Or if you're a little bit more bearish, then you can adjust your strangle down as well. So this way, you know, it doesn't have to be just a neutral strategy, right? It can be slightly bullish, so neutral to bullish or neutral to bearish. Now, you might be wondering, why do I consider this the best option strategy to generate a consistent income? Well, there are a few reasons. And the first is that it has the purest form of theta decay because there's no long options, right? As you can see, these are just two short options. So when you have two short options, all you have is just positive theta, right? You have theta decay working for you every single day. But if you have long options, let's say, for example, you know, the iron condor. So the iron condor is basically similar. You have the short put and a short call. But then you will buy the wings, right? You will have the protection. So on the top side, you buy a further out of the money call option. And at the bottom side, you will buy a further out put option. So in this way, sort of your maximum loss is kept to this uh, wings, the width of this wings down here. So the problem with this is that when you have the long options on, right now you are actually losing theta right every single day so although you are making in terms of the theta decay on your short options you're losing on the long option so they will sort of have this kind of a friction and they can reduce the maximum amount of theta that you can receive right so it wouldn't be as effective in terms of theta decay compared to the short strangle now the next reason is that this is the best way to trade the expected move, right? If you're not sure what the expected move is, I already have a video on it, which is what I call the number one secret to generating a consistent income. Even watch that, go to my channel, look for that video, right? So a 16 Delta strangle has a theoretical win of 68%, but in actual trades, it has a higher win rate, right? And that's because the implied volatility is always higher than the realized volatility. Right, it's always overstated. So in a sense, what it means is that you are actually selling a richer premium. You're getting higher premiums than you theoretically should. So the Tasty Trade team has already done a lot of research into this. So as you can see down here, this is a table of the spiders, which is the index ETF. Right, so basically you can see that the average expected move is always much greater than the realized move. Right, so regardless of the uh, volatility, right, you can see that the IV rank down here on the left hand side, right, it can be low, it can be high in all instances. You can see that the expected move is always overstated. Right, it's always much more than the realized move. So you're always receiving the premiums in terms based on the implied volatility, right, based on the expected move. But in actual fact, the movement is actually much lesser. So you can see that the expected move is graded in all different volatility conditions, just that when you have a higher volatility condition, right, basically you have a 
higher edge. You have a bigger edge. You can see down here the difference between the expected move and the realized move. When the IV rank is very high, you can see that is $10, right? It's more than $10. But as it goes all the way to the other end, you can see the uh, difference becomes slightly lesser. But the key thing to note is that in all cases, expected move is always more than realized move. And that is not just for the spiders, right? They also did the studies for the IWM, which is also another index ETF, as well as the QQQs. So they did another in-depth study to see, you know, how often does the breach occurs, right, on either side of the strangle, right? So as you can see down here, the expected breach should be 16% on a 16 delta strangle, right? So it should be 16% it breach on the put side and the call side. But in reality, right, you can see that it actually breaches much less than that. In fact, on the put side, it only uh, breaches 6% of the time. On the call side, only 12% of the time. And it's the same across all the other deltas as well, 10 deltas as well as 30 deltas. So what you'll notice is that the breach tends to be more often on the call side, on the upper side. And the only reason is because well, we have been in a bull market for the longest time, right? The stock market, ever since the index ETF has been created, it has just kept going higher and higher and higher. So that is why over time, the breach tends to be more often on the call side, right? But overall, you can see that it's still much lesser than the theoretical expected move, right? So the next thing to understand is the strangles outlier risk, right? Because when we are trading such kind of strategies, which is the undefined kind where the loss theoretically can be unlimited, right? As you can see down here, you can see that it says minus infinity because on the call side, the stock or the index ETF can pretty much just go all the way up nonstop, right? So that is why theoretically the max loss is infinity. But practically, that's very unlikely to happen. In fact, they also did a lot of studies, as you can see down here, to see what is the chances of them losing which is more than the buying power reduction. So what is the buying power reduction, right? The buying power reduction, right, basically is in this green box down here. Basically, it is the amount of money that you have to put up for uh, putting on this strangle position. So you can see down here, at every IV level, the buying power reduction encompasses nearly all losses for early managed contracts. Therefore, the total amount of capital at risk is roughly kept by the total portfolio buying power allocated, which means to say, most of the time, in fact, majority of the time, if not all the times, this will be in effect the max that you can ever lose. Although it says down here, this is the max loss, which is minus infinity. This will encompass most of the outlier risk which you should have, which means to say, if you put on a strangle, you already know upfront what could be the worst possible case, right? What's the worst possible loss that you could experience? And as you can see down here, based on this table, you can see the probability of loss exceeding this buying power reduction. And you can see, is pretty much almost close to 0%, right? Especially if you are trading in the higher volatilities. So if you were to just focus on just this table based on the 16 delta, you can see that the probability of it exceeding this number down here is 0% if the IV is from 20 to all the way above 40. Right, and then only 0 to 20 is only 0.1%. That means the chances of you actually making such a huge loss, right, which is like minus infinity, is not high at all. So this is all good, but it's all just theory. So how does this pan out when you actually trade it out in reality, right, in, in actual trading environment? By the way, if you like this video so far, please subscribe and also click the thumbs up button and also do get your free copy of the Options Income Blueprint where I share the top three options strategies that help you generate a consistent income each month trading just one to two hours a day, right? So if you want to go ahead to get this copy, just head on over to optionswithdavis.com slash blueprint. All right, back to the video. So what I've done down here is I've shared with you the last 100 trades which I've put on in terms of the strangle. So as you can see down here, there are winners and losses. And you can see that overall, these are the stats, right? I try to squeeze everything into this uh, this uh, table down here, but as you can see, it's, it's just a little bit too big, right? So I just gave the essential details down here. So you can see down here, the win rate is 77%, which is very consistent with the fact that the win rate is always higher than the theoretical 68%. Right, so the loss rate is only 23%. And you can see down here, the average win is $269 and the average loss is negative $203, right? Which is very good, right? Most of the time, if you get average win that is higher than average loss and you have a win rate that is higher, you know that you have a winning strategy on hand. 
right? You have the biggest win is 785 and the biggest loss is minus $449. So as you can see down here, while there are losses and there are losing streaks, you can see down here is a losing streak about six losses. Overall, this is still in a profit, right? So you can see down here, I've calculated out the expectancy, right? Which is a $160.44, which means on average, when I put on this trade over the long run, you know, I expect to make about $160 uh, per trade on average. So the buying power effect, the buying power reduction is roughly around $2,500 odd, right? So that should be the max risk that I should expect to hit. Right? But as you can see, in all these cases, I'm not even near that number. Right? You can see that the biggest loss is only $449, but the buying power effect is about $2,500 odd. So you can see if you go back to this table down here, this table down here is pretty accurate because I do not have any losses that's anywhere near this buying power effect. Now, of course, it's not to say that it won't happen, but it can happen as well, but this is what you need to take note of. So whenever we're trading such kind of short strangle trades, especially it's undefined, the most important thing that you need to take note of is how to manage your risk because there's always the chances of you wiping out the account if you do not manage it properly. So here are four ways to reduce huge losses when you're trading such kind of strategies like this strangle, right? So the very first way is to ensure that the buying power reduction is a maximum of 5% up to 7% of your capital, right? So for example, if you see that the buying power reduction of the trade is $2,500, and then your trading account is, let's say $25,000. So the question for you is, do you think you can put on this trade? Well, the answer is no, because this takes up 10% of your whole trading account, right? That means in the if event whereby you actually hit this max loss, you're going to hit a 10% to your account. So what do you do in this uh, situation? Well, you simply do not trade this uh, stock or this uh, index ETF. Instead, you go and find another underlying that has a smaller buying power effect for the strangle. So what you're looking at is maybe something like a thousand $250. So if you're able to find a stock and you put up the strangle and it's uh, $1,250 in terms of the buying power reduction, then you can put on the trade. Otherwise, if it's more than that, it's going to be too big for your account size. Now next, never take your trade past the 21 days to expiration mark because that's the time where the trade can start to have massive losses, right? It could get into a very big loss if you go all the way close to expiration. So that is why, you know, as much as possible, never take your trade past the 21 days to expiration. Even if it's a loss at that point, you can choose to manage it if you want or you can just take a loss and put on the next trade. Remember, this is all probability game. You can see down here, I've just taken a loss when it's a loss, right? Sometimes I manage it, sometimes I don't manage it. So at the end of the day, as long as it reaches 21 days to expiration, you want to do something. Never take it to expiration. Now, the third thing to do to reduce your huge loss is to trade index ETS instead of individual stocks. Well, because you can firstly continuously put on this strangle if you want, Right, because there are no earnings, right? With no earnings, you can keep trading the index ETFs. Secondly, you do not get exposed to all this individual stock news, right? Because when a stock or a company just release some sudden news, it can really affect the, the prices, right? For example, if the stock suddenly or the company uh, has a product launch that didn't do well or the movie didn't do well or for example Google right they have this uh, AI which they release and there's some mistake in one of the answers all of a sudden the stock started to tank right so if you want to have more consistency in your results especially when you're trading such kind of undefined risk strategies go more with index ETFs and finally you want to spread out your trades across four things you want to spread out against time that means you put on at different dates Right, you don't want to put it all on the same day. You're going to put on different price levels. So as the price goes up, you put some, price goes down, you put some again. And then you also want to diversify by different strikes, right? You do not want to put it all across the same type of strikes and you want to have different expiration dates. So when you do it all this, basically what you're doing is that you are really spreading out the your risk, right? So one strangle might be profitable, another might be a loss, another one might be a big winner, one might be another small loss. So at the end of the day, this will all sort of like smoothen your PL volatility. And this is basically 
how you can reduce your huge losses. So basically, these are the four ways that you must really follow, right? Especially if you do not want to incur such huge losses when trading the strangle. Alright guys, that's it for this video and I hope you found this video helpful and if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel as well. This way I can create more videos like this for you. And last but not least, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time and may the options favor you.